Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Sloss. Hey, it's me. They've let you over the border from I Scotland know. into England. I know. Well, I mean, is Newcastle really England? I'm not sure. Because, like, my support act and best friend over the years, like, Claire Humphries, he's from uh, Newcastle, and it's just, there's always, there's a genuine affiliation between the the Jodies and the Scots, where we're just like... Kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're all, you're pretty much Scots, because we're... Like you hit the south as much as we do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Anything that's below Leeds is southern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Southern uh, softies. Exactly. Yeah. Agreed. What's super interesting when I speak to Americans, they don't know that there is an actual wall between Scotland and England. Yes. So like, they don't know that Hadrian's Wall is a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you watch Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know the wall like that actually exists. It's a bit smaller and it's kind of ruined. Smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's actually there. No way, man. There's two, like, and, and the uh, Antonine Wall as well. It's yeah. a man who knows his background. So when I sometimes have to do my research for guests, yeah. I interview a guy who understands the, the foremost intellect on alien civilizations, and I'll be like, oh, bloody hell, I have to sink my teeth into this. Aye. The research for yourself was watching your Netflix specials, Great fun. watching on YouTube, and sliding into your mum's DMs. I that is my mother to a fucking team. Like, I, love, <laughs> I love the woman. So much, um, uh, I love her dearly, but she's absolute. She's she's an absolute whore for fame. She loves it. She loves it. she loves <laughs> the fact that she's uh, known as because during over the course of the years during the Edinburgh Festival and stuff, my mum will spend a lot of money going to see as much shows as she can during the French because she supports all comedians and even when they try to give her like free tickets and stuff, she refuses to because she understands how the industry works. Yeah, she's an absolute fucking sweetheart. But yeah, she loves loves the attention. Um, uh, and uh, but she's fucking heard it. Like she's a very, very funny woman. She is. She's Wonderful. given me so later on. I've got a couple of um, a couple of things that I need to ask you about, which is the inside information from I'm Mother. Assuming, yeah, she started shoved, shoved a knife in my back like the Judas whore that she is. Yeah, she has done indeed. <laughs> um, so your Netflix special Jigsaw, mm-hmm. which some people may have seen and some may not, I wanted you, if you can, to just try and explain the concept of. Jigsaw or a jigsaw for life. Um, the concept is basically, um, I, I don't hate relationships. I just hate ninety percent of people in relationships because they are. I don't like liars. And you, when you're in it, most people in relationships, they're lying to me and they're lying to them fucking selves. I was sick of. There's a certain arrogance to people in relationships that they've achieved something that I don't have by you know settling for this other person that they have a happier life than I do. I enjoy being single, right? Um, and one day I won't enjoy it. Someday, one day I'll enjoy the company of, of the person and I want to spend the rest of my life with them. Um, I believe that. What I get annoyed at is by people when they force something into their life, they force a person into their life because they think they should be in a relationship, which is what 90% of you fuckers do. You cram this horrible person into your life and you post pictures about how happy you are and you're not happy. And I know you're not happy because you are bragging about whenever I'm happy or proud about something I'm not on Twitter going god yeah I just nailed this I'm the best at this fucking I'm enjoying the thing you're like re- it's, reveling in the experience yeah. itself I'm not boasting on, I'm not posting pictures of how much fun I'm having about the thing because I'm enjoying myself for me you post about things uh when they're not going well because you, you you lie to social media so you can convince yourself so when you look back at your own pictures artificially inseminating a sense of purpose right? yes and I just feel for me somebody who's confident enough being single you know it, it's it's fine but even I sometimes feel the pressure of sort of people you know people in relationships are going oh god maybe I should be in a relationship maybe I should settle for that and I'm barely able to resist it so when you're putting out this content that's sort of bragging about how happy you are when you're not and you are adding to this idea that being alone is wrong, you're going to cause people who are of uh, less sort of, people who've maybe been lonely longer than I have or don't have, you know, like a social circle or whatever, the, you know, uh, or, you know, mental health issues, countless other things. They see you happy and you've said that you weren't happy when you were a singer and the happiness that you got is from finding this fucking person and you're full of shit. And I think it's very, very damaging. And if you want to brag about happy you are in a relationship, I will absolutely brag about happy I am being single and I will win. Fantastic. If you, well, want, I mean, if you I am, want to end up in a happiness competition and a bragging competition, I'll fucking bury let's, you. Let's get our dicks out and measure them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I am firmly in the same camp as yourself. Mm. And I think there is a, it's a very 
nuanced understanding of relationships to be able to say that I am happy I'm happy on my own because it sounds an awful lot like you don't want someone mm. which isn't the case no no absolutely I, th- I think from watching the special it sounds like an uncompromising set of standards on what you will accept as a partner I, it's not it's not even that like I don't I don't think getting a partner they should sort of be anything I don't have any expectations of my uh, future uh, partner for me I just think falling in love should be the most inconvenient thing in the fucking world like it should ruin your day like people who when they fall in love like I know it's in love because I, every time I thought about them I smiled and I was happy and I'm like no no, no that's you in love with the idea of love it's not about the individual you're in love with the idea of being in love and you love the feeling of being in love when you're actually in love like for, I think it's just you know it's, you just go oh for fuck's sake I was having so much fun. I was living my best life. And then this person came along and they make me laugh. And I want to spend my time with them. I love, used to love being alone. And now every, every time I'm in a situation that I'm enjoying, my brain goes, I wish this person was here with me. I want to share this with me. Fuck, God damn, I was having so much fun. Yeah. I had so much freedom and I still have that. But just now I can't stop. I, oh yeah, every time I've been in love, I've just gone, you bitch, how dare you make me, I I love you so much, and that's so inconvenient for me, because I was enjoying being selfish, I was enjoying, and now, I love you so much, that you're my priority, and that's insanity. I suppose, I suppose what, the implication there is that, if you, if a major part of your life, and your purpose, worth, happiness, is derived from your relationship with someone else, it puts a lot of power in someone else's hands, right? Like you Absolutely. need to be, you yeah. need to feel you're very vulnerable at the mercy and at the behest of what they want to do to you. Yeah, I think I think you should, you know, you, but the person you're with should make you so happy, like all the time. Like if they make you feel bad, you know, then get rid of them. I've never understood that. I find the concept of the one is the most arrogant thing in the entire. And this is coming from an incredibly arrogant man. <laughs> but the the concept of the of the one is so narcissistic that not even I can fall into it. You th- you're telling me, if you believe in the one, there's only one person on this planet that's good enough for you. Wind your fucking neck in. <laughs> fucking, in a one mile radius, I can find you a hundred people who are... That you'd say yes to. Yeah, who are not only good enough for me, but better. Yeah. Just, yeah, I, I, and... It, but we we create this idea and, and, oh my God, when it gets difficult, put the work in. Why? If it's not easy, like I think, you know, every, and I've done those relationships, you know, I've been in those relationships where the, you know, the person makes you feel like shit and, you know, you look at your parents and you look at our grandparents' generation because none of them would get divorced because it was too inconvenient and fucking being alone was so taboo. And it was, you know, the only way you were ever out of a relationship is if one of them fucking died, you know. <laughs> Back when all of our granddads were perverts and they were perverts, they were stalkers. How did you meet your grand? Oh, well, she didn't want me at first and then I fucking wore her down. <laughs> fucking Jesus, Grandpa. That's awful. That's horrendous. You just lived in a time when you were just able to stand outside of her work with flowers and be like, I love you. <laughs> And she were the and she didn't have the internet or a phone or Tinder to know that there were options outside of the five miles that she inhabited. Yeah, man, our we we our grandparents lied through their fucking teeth, and they just they didn't stay to, and some of them did stay together through love, but I just think they'd come out of fucking World War Two. Uh, they yeah, were five I mean, years old and they were just like we have to thank fuck we're alive. Like, yeah. better, better better make some more of us. Let's make loads. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I mean, I think people are quite quick to judge the. Um, I guess the Gen Y and the and the millennials for this very transactional nature mm. of uh, relationships and that it's easy come easy go and a lot of the time you hear people talk wistfully about this like older time where people would you know they'd stick it out and this that and the other but I mean sticking it out in a relationship sounds an awful lot like in- incompatibility to me yeah sticking out just being like you know well you know we've been together for this it's, it's a sunken cost fallacy. Like it's exactly that you go. Oh, well, I spent all this time with them, and I and I get those feelings. I've been in those relationships. Where you go, I've put three years into it. Like, am I willing to? You say in the show, am I? You got that choice. Are you willing to either admit that the last three years of your life have been a waste, or am I going to waste the rest of my life? And it's a tough fucking thing. And also, break up breakups always suck as well. Yeah. Like even if it's mutual, sometimes the mutual ones are the saddest ones. Yeah, they are. When but, both of you know yeah. that neither of you are happy. Yeah, but but you don't hate each other. You just <coughs> grow, you grow apart. Like my first girlfriend, when we first we were together for two and a half years, and we broke up. 
she didn't cry I sobbed for the whole break because <laughs> I felt so guilty I was like god I'm destroying her life and she was like no dick like I'll be fine without you yeah like I'll miss you And but we you know she was like look we have grown apart there's nothing wrong with it like mm-hmm. we don't hate each other there's no animosity we didn't cheer on each other we weren't but just at a point she just went that's nah, not it's not you and that's really those are sad because that's like you know it's much easier if the person's a cunt here or they've cheated on you because it's you, a very yeah. dr- very sharp line to draw. Yeah, you just go. It's done. It's over. Band aid's been ripped. But when you know, when you if you don't grow together, you know, you grow in different directions. There's always that bit of like, oh god, this is me. Or, mm. You know, because you're never going to blame them. Well, I mean, I think one of the things I noticed when I was especially young was that I felt like there was a the world was ours to be girdled around the relationship, and not that we were being stretched by the world. And that it's like, no, man, like, just love will, love will win. Like, love, will, love it, it, it doesn't matter. Like, so I had a girlfriend that was a dancer in Ibiza, and mm. then she was going to go dancing in Egypt when she came back from Ibiza, and this, that, and the other. I look back now, and I was like, man, it was a holiday romance. Yeah. Like, concede the fact that it was a holiday romance. But no, no, I was going to try and launch a business, do a master's in international marketing at Newcastle University, and have a relationship with a dancer who was in Egypt at the same time. Easy. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> looking back, I'm like... What the fuck were you doing? Mm. Like, and every night there would be me. I'd be concerned. She'd be out dancing till late. Is she drinking? Is the fucking Steve Angelo and his fucking you know is he around and is his mm. posse around and blah blah blah? I think just bro, just let, like she's not happy because you're complaining and you're insecure all the time. Yeah, like, and, and you're forcing your insecurities onto how you're being. Like, yeah, that little thing. But what you're doing, whatever I want to fucking do. But yeah. just, why don't you trust me enough to know that I'm not going to intentionally be a bad person towards you. Yeah. It says more about yourself and your impression of me. Yeah, than well, absolutely. Than I am as a person, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's that's one of the things that really struck me. And one of the other things that I really liked was how you talked about the innate desire for people to feel like they need to have someone to make themselves whole. And I think that that is part of the jigsaw analogy itself, mm. right? That you have particular quadrants of the jigsaw that you put together. Could, yeah. you, could you explain those? Yeah, well, so originally it was the idea was like you've got the obviously with the jigsaw you start on the outside you've got the four corners you got and it, it, this is obviously different for different people but in the analogy I use it was like friends family job and hobbies like and those are transferable they're different from you and somewhere you know your family my family is very important to me and so are my friends and I'm for example on my job don't have many hobbies mm-hmm. so that corner is obviously small for me but for other people you know maybe they fucking hate their family maybe their family is shit but yep. and maybe they've only got like three close friends but they've got lots of hobbies and that their job is an all sort of consuming thing um and it's you know the pr- problem with the, the jigsaw analogy is people jigsaws don't change over the years they're always the same picture mm-hmm. whereas mm-hmm. you change so there's points when you just go fuck I don't want to be obsessed with my job anymore or you know you know, my, or I want my family bit to be bigger now and you yeah. have to sort of move around so it's a constantly changing and uh, shifting thing but the one thing we all want uh, is we all feel broken if we don't have someone there and the reason we feel broken is because of how we raise children it, you know the TV shows everything is about love everything is about relationships you, you know our parents, divorce is very, very common. It's a very, very common thing and there's nothing wrong with it. But divorce, talking about divorce in front of kids is very sort of taboo because you can't tell kids that sometimes love is wrong. You can't tell an eight-year-old that they're going to get it wrong so many fucking times, <laughs> so many times before they get it right. Uh, because that's not what you want the story of you know love to be when you, you know, you're seven or eight years old. Um, and well, I the think, Disney movie, right? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's always the Disney princess gets uh, the prince or the prince gets the princess or it's always about these relationships. The whole focus of every, every single TV show is, and I've done this even now, when I'm pitching TV shows, they go, who's the love interest? You're like, why does there have to be a fucking love interest? Like, why does my show that has nothing to do with love, why does my character, why is that important to, you know, his or her growth? Like, it's... People just need to... A lot of people feel the desire to latch on to that particular story, though, mm. right? It's a story <clears throat> of hope and redemption for people who don't have it and, I, I, I guess, uh, a hope of continuation for those who do. Mm. I Yeah, then again, I've, I've, look, I've always said that I've got nothing against relationships and Jigsaw was never meant to be a breakup show. And it is not. It's a love letter to single people. 
I just <laughs> took me so long to be secure with being single. It took me to know, you know, especially with family and stuff, when you get married, when you're having kids, you're like, whenever I fucking want. Yeah. And if I don't have them, tough shit. Right, get a grandchild from your other kids. I don't care. I've, I don't owe you anything. I was, I was at my business partner's wedding a few years ago. Him and his missus have been together since they were 20. They are the exact opposite, the polar opposite of my situation. Mm. Just about to have their second child and they've got two dogs and it is like the white picket fence, the British white picket oh, fence equivalent. And we're at his wedding and we've been there for the weekend. It's been beautiful and everything's amazing and the family's got on and the service is fantastic and this, that and the other. As I'm driving away, I can see his mum and a couple of her family members just looking at me as I drove past and I could just see in their eyes they were thinking, you're next. And I wound the window down and I was like, won't be soon. And just drove <laughs> off. And I'm like, there are, there are different paths in love life for different people. Mm-hmm. Like, in, 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 yeah, I, so some of us, don't get me wrong, I, in, in this, I'm an absolute romantic. Like I, I want to, I want to be a dad more than anything in the world. I really, really do, and I want to get married. I want to have kids, and I want that. I just don't think I have to do it before I'm thirty. And I don't think, I think I'm not looking for it at all. Like I'm thoroughly enjoying, you know, because I'm not being in a relationship and not being a dad means I can be selfish as shit at the moment. Mm-hmm. I can travel as much as I travel for my job. I can really focus on, you know, and one day that will change. One day, some. Goddamn woman is going to come in my life and just be perfect, and I'm going to go, you motherfucker! <laughs> God damn it! I didn't realize that I was writing all of these routines, and it was you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, going to come and, in. The, and the fucking hypocrisy. Oh man, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. See when I get into a fucking relationship, my fans are going to be like, "You fucking what?" And yeah. I'm like, "I know. I'm yeah. sorry. She made me fall in love with her. <laughs> like, what? I didn't mean to blame her. Look at her with her fucking perfect little laugh that, for some reason, makes me feel warm inside. All that. Yeah, I'm going to be a hypocrite. I'm going to be an absolute hypocrite. But no. But I also won't be because I ne- I'm not against relationships. I'm against fake relationships and the more fake relationships that exist you are it's 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 a disease like because you'll say they go i'm so happy i'm so happy in this relationship and you're not but you'll lie to your friends that are single and go i'm so happy with jonathan or i'm so happy with claire and they'll go fucking hell they get through it they hate each other and they get through it yeah that's what we must must do and you sat you just go fuck it i this person i'll change who i am you know everyone says it takes work why why does it have to take work? Like, if you've got kids, absolutely. Like, if it's, but when you're just starting out, like, man, if I had not, if, this might sound insane, and that's because I am. If I, if, if I'm in a relationship and we have one argument in that first year, bye. Yeah. Like, like, oh, we can have disagreements. Like, of yeah. course, I love you. You want discussion. pineapple on pizza? I don't want pineapple on pizza. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. But like, if. Like, let's see. Something I get, fundamental. Yeah. Like, you... I have a lot of female friends. One of my best friends in the world is... Uh, God, I've been friends with Jean for eight years. We live together. She's one of my closest friends. If I was ever in a relationship with someone who's like, you need to see Jean less, I would be like, you can absolutely take a running fuck to yourself. <laughs> like, it's, you know, that... Because that's you. That's that's either jealousy, which um, I, I, I don't suffer from. So it's maybe, you know, I don't have any, I don't have any fucking sympathy for it. Yeah. Uh, because it's, those are your insecurities. And I, and trust me, I, I will do everything to, you know, if I'm with someone, I don't want them to feel insecure. You know, I think your job is to make that person, you know, feel loved and valuable. And, but, you know, even if you do that and they're still fucking jealous, you're like, I can't. Yeah. You know, it's not my job to fix fighting, you. Fighting the fucking yeah. tide here. Yeah, yeah. It's not your job to fix me and it's not my job to fix you. You know, I don't owe, you don't owe anyone anything. Yeah, really. But when you spend a lot of time together, you've been in a relationship or whatever. You sometimes you feel you. How do you th- how do you think that you mediate then between someone who thinks this relationship might not be right mm-hmm. for me? And Daniel said, like you know, too many disagreements and too many complaints and too much upset is a bad idea. And then a side where you may find some form of a blockage within a relationship which requires some work to be done, which you then push through to find a newer yeah. level. Obviously, the devil's in the details there. Yeah, I mean, look, there's, look, that's, you know, there's a problem with, one of the many problems with the, the jigsaw analogy in my show, which is, yeah, nothing is black and white. And what I'm up there doing is I'm saying this is the black and this is the white because the amount of nuance and time I would need to discuss it yeah. adequately would be seven, even... A day. We you need volumes of yeah, books. There are, yeah. there, are, there are psychologists who study for years who don't even are able to, you know, explain to that level of sort of detail. It's up to you if it feels, you know, right. I totally believe that there are, 
some relationship should require work. Like if you're feeling a little bit, you shouldn't dump someone out of the blue necessarily. Mm-hmm. You should go, here's what I feel like I'm either less attracted to you or, uh, or I miss the spark that we used to have or I think, or, or I feel like I'm changing in this way and you're pushing me in another way. You talk to the person, open the communication before you break up. And then, uh, if they're like, well, that's not going to change, then. I, I, it's different for everyone. Like it is, and that's that's where the the devil being in the details is obviously where the why relationships are, are hard. Mm. Like, and it's not hard as in it has to be hard work. As in, sometimes it's just going to take a lot of cognitive power. But one of the things that you touch on that I really really like is that you need to love yourself before you can learn to love someone else, and before you can allow them to love you. Yeah, hundred percent. And I I think you need to be able to understand your own values and what you will and will not tolerate within yourself. Mm -hmm. Like there's certain things that I've realized are uh, keystone habits and keystone failures of myself. And when I get them right, I feel 10 times better. And when I get them wrong, I feel 10 times worse. But I never knew that I was being triggered on those by partners and I was projecting onto partners for a decade Yeah. until I actually did a bit of introspective work and then realized that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. Like, the problem was never with them. The, pro- the problem was with them, but it was other things. Yes. But, you know. Was, you didn't... We, especially when we come out of relationships, when we come out of our teenage years, none of us are fucking confident, right? Even the confident teenagers, like, deep down weren't oh, yeah. confident. Like, we're all we're all just b- fucking balls of... Uh, hormones. Hormones and, and fear and insecurities and anxiety. <laughs> and, you know, we're just filled up to our balls with cum and we were horny and we didn't know why and we didn't know what to do. And you sit there and you get into a, so, so you're insecure and, you, and, and also, you know, you, they suddenly go, you're an adult. Especially when you're a teenager, they go, you're a young adult. You're a fucking teenager. I'm a young I'm adult. I'm a child. I'm yeah. a child. Who I'm 28 and now I'm a young adult. Yeah. I'm a young adult only now. Is. Before 100%. that, I was a fucking, I was a child. Like, how dare you? Co- how, like, I understood when I was fucking serious. I was like, I'm a young adult. Full of shit. No, I was not. And the fact that you even let me believe I was a young adult is ridiculous. I didn't yeah. know anything. Fucking child abuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get into, so you don't love yourself because you don't know who you are. And the problem is when you get into a relationship, then especially when we go into university, I mean, not that I did, but I saw it amongst uh, my friends is you go through the stage where you're allowed to you're going to change so much because you know you don't really choose what fucking high school you go to or who your friends you you pick a friend out of this randomly selected of people in your fucking area who happen to be born in the same year like none of them are you're just friends with them out of convenience and don't you'll get friends for life and whatnot but when you go to university there's a lot more freedom to it you're going to grow naturally and not even in university but just after high school we're going to change so much. And I feel like sometimes if you're in a relationship there, which you would be because you're like, oh God, here's this scary new world that I'm a fucking adult in. What do adults do? Oh, adults are married. Adults are in relationships. So what I'll do, to be an adult, I'll get into a fucking relationship and I'll do exactly what my parents did, which is compromise and change and do anything to make this relationship work because that's what adults do. And you sit there and you create this false version of yourself and it's not malicious in any way. And the person that you, are, they're not changing you for bad reasons, you're like, please change me. I want to do anything. I love you and you make me happy and I want to make you as happy as you make me. So I will change. I'll willingly change for you. And then seven years later, you're like, I don't even fucking like rock climbing. <laughs> like, I fucking hate cheese and wine. Like, why have I watched Eat, Pray, Love 17 fucking times? <laughs> like, this is not who I, I am. And it's really hard because that person that changed you, they didn't necessarily force you they to change. They didn't think, I'm going to make this cunt a rock climber. No, yeah. <laughs> you just decided yourself, you're like, I'll do whatever makes you happy. And, you know, just all the you're like, hey, I've been... It's- I like football. Yeah. I want to it's, watch it's like being it's like being moldable putty, right? Mm. And and you're just so malleable at that early age. I mean, I because love's I, confusing, man. When you love, you do anything for that person. You would, and the, the, one of the the maddest things and the the crazy duality that we need to hold in both both of these need to exist together, right? So you need to say you are crazy malleable. You are going to be potentially changed in a manner that is inappropriate and damaging to you. But you also kind of need to experience these things and you also need to suffer so you can learn. Yeah, yeah. So you can't expedite the success and avoid the suffering 
But also, if you could get it absolutely right, you, you could. And oh, you're like, oh, fucking hell, mate. Do you want to have your cake and eat it and throw it out the window as well? Like, right. I just think, you know, the, the best, some of the best lessons I learned about myself, I learned from failed relationships. 100%. 100%. Um, uh, which is why I genuinely like, you know, you know, I like the fact that I'm friends with a, you know, a lot of, well, or we're well, not friends with my exes, but we ended on sort of amicable terms and I've got no sort of ill feelings towards him even the person that Jigsaw was about we mm-hmm. sort of managed to I mean, that, that sh- right that show was very cathartic I was going to say I mean surely once that got published the I, person in question I don't know if uh, she has uh, watched it um, but you know I think she'll you know, no letter bombs or anything yet so. no no but I think I think she'd understand as well like, right, I mean it's very respectful mm. I think personally like I, if I I do say she's the worst person I've ever met in my life. Okay, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, but there's got to be some comedic kind of... Uh, yeah, 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 A bit yeah. of artistic license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also I mean, exaggeration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that, I mean, that, that wasn't... That, that wasn't so good. It was a, it was a, it was a terrible, terrible uh, relationship. Uh, it took a while to sort of recover from... Because that's always the thing as well. Like, whenever you get it wrong, you feel like such a dick. Yeah. And also, the one, one, I think one of the worst feelings in the world in a, in a relationship is, you know, when... It's such a shame that the 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 line "it's not you, it's me" is is cliche. And if you ever say that, the person you're breaking up will hate you because sometimes it's the it's the only honest thing. It's the breakup you go, equivalent of like, Netflix and chill. And I'm like, I, no, that's what I want to do. I, do. I really do want to watch it's some Net- Netflix and yeah, chill. The out. Fire Festival documentaries out, and it sounds fucking very unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and and sometimes it is not you, it's me. You've done nothing wrong. I'm just changing, and it my future doesn't involve you and you feel so shit because this person that you know loved you unconditionally um and sort of you know was is amazing there's nothing wrong with them and you don't love them you feel so broke you feel evil are you are you an empathetic individual would you say for hugely i hate my i, I, I hate too. my levels it's of empathy one of my biggest weaknesses and i've only just be, recently begun to realize it yeah i i really and i don't i look i think let's not criticize empathy i think the whole world could do with a lot more of it mm-hmm. but well, I, we've got can we take some of mine like oh, for I the love of fucking god i can't handle it my life <laughs> which is why i put up so many a lot of walls sometimes it was just like if people knew how empathetic i was they'd take advantage of me 100%. So that's why I just, you know, that's why I make sure that my whole prov- my whole bravado on stage is I'm barely big bollocks. Nothing you can say will ever co- make me question anything. Otherwise, I'm so assured in all of my opinions. I'm the smartest man alive. I'm God. That's what my whole persona is. That is just because, you know, if you knew how, you, you know, it's so much easier to come across as cold and I don't give a shit. I think so. And I, I do think as well that the, the, the empathy thing means that when... When the iron gets struck really, really well, like it, the 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 world can come crashing down pretty yeah. quick. And I think like weird stuff for me, like even what if level I, of empathy? Like if you see someone cry, do you immediately start welling up? I, it's difficult, man. I, yeah. I mean, that's in there, like to the point where if I, I ever, if if I ever hear if I ever hear like a I don't know why it is, but if I ever hear like a uh, like a girl, like a small girl, just shout for her dad for some reason. There we go. Oh, yeah. Don't want. I'm like, what the? I'm not even a dad. <laughs> I'm totally. I'm fine. like, wait. And don't get me wrong. Girls have called me daddy before, but in a very different context, <laughs> and they were much older. <laughs> but like, why? Why do I just hear the? the I don't know what it is. Hey, um, I want. I do some fucking weird shit to just for so long as well. Like I stopped myself from crying in my teenage years, and I've got no idea why I did. Okay, uh, my father is. My, my I've seen my dad cry before. Like okay. he, he, my dad was never one of those guys that's like he's like crying his way. He's never said that ever. I've seen my dad cry. He was logical. Yeah, and he would be always always in control of his emotions. But if the man wanted to cry, he'd fucking cry. For some reason, I don't know where I got it from. I got this idea in my head that crying was weak, and I would physically stop myself from crying at movies and stuff. Like, mm. the two would be like, nah, ah, yep. nah, ah. Yeah. I'm like, Grit your teeth yeah, and stop it. I'm home alone and I'm stopping myself from crying. Like a fucking sociopath. Yeah. Because I hated my empathy. I hated how empathetic it was. Whereas now I fully embrace it. I just go on YouTube, down deep YouTube holes of stuff that I know that's going to make me cry. You ever seen it? Uh, Dehydrated from tear loss, yeah. Man, once, uh, every now and again, if I, if I feel that like I haven't been emotional enough one month, I'll just I'll get a bottle of wine and I'll sit down on fucking YouTube and I'll watch uh, soldiers coming home to their dogs. <laughs> I'll watch, oh, that's, uh, that's some serious far, shit. Or that. Dogs, yeah, that gets me uh, deaf babies being given hearing aids, yep. sobbing, yep. openly sobbing. Yep. And uh, in, you ever seen the Enchroma? Enchroma's the colourblind glasses. Yep, yep. yep. 
I colours for the first fucking time. We- oh, and the, my new one is uh, God. This is my proper dice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is uh, is uh, adoptive dads like like being. It's like the kids taking their second name. Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Like hey, Happy dads. Christmas! You're being, you're being yeah, adopted. Like yeah, oh yeah, no, oh, no, no! It's always the it's it's the daughters or the sons to their stepdad being like, oh, I've sh- legally changed my son. Yeah, just like, so you see these big grown men that are like six foot five, look like they used to be in prison, heavily tattooed, and this like this thirty year old girl goes, "You're my dad now," and. He breaks world the, just comes crashing down. oh man it destroys me I love it so uh, links good. to everything will be in the show notes below if you want to have a nice cry at some point oh, soon oh do it it's like I always I do <coughs> for so many years I repress it so much of like not letting it go it's like bleeding the radiator you're like a fucking like, empathy junkie now aren't yeah, you yeah oh man it's just like skydiving just be like what else can we fucking <laughs> cry give me another line of dogs meeting like, their owners I've, yeah. I've never been on a plane and not watched the blind side and sobbed <laughs> man, if there's any international flight I'm like if fucking blind side's on this I'm I'm Sandra Bullock <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a very upper upper class wealthy woman and I want to uh, adopt and save a black child uh, to play American football, which is a sport I have no interest in. <laughs> I love it. But I get. I, I'm on. I love crying now. I think you know there may be some people out there who can uh, empathise with our empathy. And one God, of, they're weak. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> must suck to be them. Just yeah, yeah. Fuck if you're know. more empathetic than I am, wow. Well, I know. Um, one of the problems that 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 occurs off the back of that is. Being able to break up with someone, you alluded to it earlier on where you said that you were terrified that you were just going to end somebody's world. Mm-hmm. And the understanding the reality that other people will be fine, they're going to be yeah. okay. Oh, they'll be sad. And that's because breakups are always sad. Yep. They just are. Even if it's a bad relationship, that person was part of your life and they were a big, big part of your life and they're not. And you're losing when you lose, when you break up with someone. You're losing a part of yourself there. You know, it, it, it's just always going to be sad. Like, even if you've been with someone for fucking three months, they were a great three months, or they were, but you spent so much time thinking about it. It's the closing of a chapter. And like, there's, a, there's a recency bias as well, right? That it's difficult to remember what life was like before someone. You can be with someone for, you know, three to six months. Mm. And you're like, especially if you're, young, especially if you're under sort of 30, 40 years old, like, that's a significant proportion of your life. And it's the most recent yeah. proportion of your uh, portion yeah. of your life. So you're like, fucking hell, like, yeah. Uh, of course this person feels like a very, very large part. And what did I do on a Sunday morning before yeah. we did who breakfast did I, Sundays or whatever? Who did I text? Yeah. Like, I, you know, I, what, what did I, you know, they, they made me love olives and now I love olives. And how can I ever have an olive again without thinking of them? Yeah. They'll get over it. They're fucking olives. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't feel like that at the time. Also, I understand, like, eh... Uh, People who are, you know, when you're in one of those relationships and you know uh, that you're going to break up with the person, it just becomes, it's you, you're, you're negotiating with terrorists, but the terrorist is yourself. You're going to do it next week. Or, you know, it's always the thing. You're like, I can't dump them before Christmas because they probably brought me Christmas presents and that's horrible. I don't want them to go and film the family. And then I can't break up with them in New Year because yeah. it's going to be New Year. And then I can't do it before Valentine's Day because Valentine's Day is coming up. And you just, I'm, I'm very much of the stance and it's very hard to do, but I have done it in my past couple of relationships is I go, the second I know I'm breaking up with them, I do it that day. That would be a fantastic rule to live by. Aye, but I, it's tough as hell. It is difficult, but I do think that these sort of these heuristics and the frameworks listeners who have listened to Relationships 101, 102, and 103. If you haven't listened to them, you need to go listen to them now, yeah. Um, we try and come up with these these guidelines because in a... The analogy that I use is you know that you're going to fall into some quicksand and you know it's going to happen in a week's time. Mm-hmm. You're like, right, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to research online. I'm going to look at the techniques for getting out of quicksand and then when it happens, I'll be prepared and I'll have my stick with me and I'll do the this. And then in a second iteration of this world... I push you in some quicksand and I go, right, get your phone out and have a look at how to fucking get out of quicksand. And you're like, without a plan in advance and without some rules and heuristics to stick to, the situation moves your capacity to perceive what is happening efficiently and effectively so far that you, you don't, you, your ability to make choices is effectively muted. Mm. And you're like, well, Okay, so these kind of rules like that are actually a really good way of bringing people back down to earth. And I have made relationships that I know I'm going to break up with the person in. That period has lasted longer than the bit before it in the past. 
And I mean, that is a... It's also cruel. Like, that's it's, a, it's, it's one of the things that... The, the, and if anyone out there is in a relationship that you know you're about to get out of, the one thing that always inspired me was always... The second you know it's over with that person, every minute that you spend with them is cruel because you are wasting their time. Uh, you know there's no future in it. They don't know that. And, 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 and they need uh, the time to, to grieve to, for the breakup and stuff and the time to move on. And you, every minute that you're with them is you are stealing a moment off their recovery and their future off of them. And that is the most selfish thing. Because the other thing, I was like, it's so selfish for me to break up with this person. Whereas, no, no, the opposite is true. It's so selfish to not. Like, yeah, they're going to they're gonna be heartbroken. You're going to be fucking heartbroken. And you're going to be filled with fucking doubt. But... It, if you love them as much as you claim to, and even if it's not in that way, you fucking dump them, stop stringing them along, stop wasting their time, stop letting their fucking sperm shrivel up in their balls or their eggs <laughs> shrivel up in their body or whatever <laughs> fucking thing, you know. You are right. I mean, externalizing that accountability to someone else is, is a real surefire way of driving home just how much time you're wasting. You're, like, you're not yeah. wasting, you're not just wasting your own life. You're but you're wasting theirs. You're wasting, wasting theirs. theirs. Like if you, if you, you know, you said there, the reason you don't want to break up with that person is because you don't want to hurt them. Right. And that is admirable. Like that's really, that is a really, really nice thing. You, you're willing to sacrifice your life to make this person happy. But that's also fucking cruel. Like you're going to rob this person of the chance of true love. Like that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna you're gonna stay with them and pretend to love them to to save their fucking heartbreak. You're not. That's not a nice thing you're doing. Like you're just you're putting them in the fucking Truman Show. Yeah. Like that's what you're doing. You're just like everything's fine. Everything's <laughs> dandy. And they're like, well, he's smiling. <laughs> but he still fucks me like he used to. He doesn't make as much eye contact and whatnot. And the four plays a little bit late, but he says he loves me. Look at the ring. <laughs> Man, it's. It is very, very true. I, I, I wish that it, it didn't strike such a, it didn't resonate so hard with me, but it does. And, it, you know, it very well may do to a lot of people at home. I wanted to move on to the next most important topic on my list, which is how important it is to have a shaved arsehole. Um, incredibly important. You are among friends here. This is a safe space. Mm. And everyone who is listening will know just how much we appreciate a, a, a clean. Is yours for shitting or rimming? Uh, well, it's dual oh, purpose. Yeah, it's dual purpose, right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so, have you tried a Shatofa bidet? So, it's the Arabic bidet that's kind of on a hose, if you've ever been to Asian and Arab countries. I haven't only ever used it, because I'm just, I'm scared about where the water goes. So, that's the thing. So, the, the issue that you have when you come up against one of these bidets, especially one that's in Yusuf, one of the co-hosts' house, like, the pressure that comes out of it is enough to clean dirt off a car. And if you're not holding sufficient yeah. if, ring if get, tension... If you get the angle wrong, it comes out your mouth. Well, like, it's an it's enema. Like... You're, you're enemaing yourself because you don't have enough anal tone. Mm. Um, and, yeah, it's uh, but give us the... If someone's debating, if they thought, I, you know, I've considered shaving my ass, but I don't really understand why. Why, why, why should someone shave their ass? Well, first of all, uh, we, we, we belong to the, uh, the... The older generations can call us the millennial generation or whatever generation. My generation is the ass-eating generation. <laughs> like, I genuinely, I would love to see the statistics of how many people born around 1999 lick each other's heart. Because it's, it's, it's most of us. Yep. And it's definitely more than previous generations, or at least, or 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 my gran is very very private about her rimming schedule. Yeah. But I, uh, I originally do it just because man, I, I don't have much fucking body hair. It's not who I am. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, it just all coalesces on my arse. And wiping's a nightmare. It's like fucking and Mordor get, down there. I get the fucking crack maggots, you know, when you are wiping, then it's oh. sort of like, aye. And I was just like, it's. Just at one point you scratch your ass and I'm like, is that talk? It's gross. It's horrible. Yeah. Uh, and don't be wrong. Shaving your asshole is not a graceful process. There's no, there's no good way to do it. What's your technique? Uh, the shame squat. Shame oh, squat. Is it? Shame squat in, in the, the shower. In the, in the bath shower. Shame, yeah. shame squat in the shower. Like holding the razor at the head just oh, because you can it. Oh, oh. Just, it's, it's a real, it's a life and death situation every time. The, mm. the, you know, I mean, I, I need to, I don't know whether you do as well, but I sometimes need to work myself up to it. Like, oh, yeah. I know that, when I know that, like, arsehole shaving day is coming in. Yeah. I, it's, you go, you, you build up, you go for the shower, you treat yourself nice, maybe light some candles. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to go for it. We're going to, it's, it's good, but I'm also of the thing, like, look, if I want somebody to stick their fucking tongue in my butt, I'm going to give them the best butt to do that. Exactly. With. It's going to make sure it's clean. Like, it's the same thing, um, you know, 
uh, when it comes to sort of pubic hair in general, I don't give a fuck where you have you don't. I've always said, I don't give a fuck where you have body hair on your body. Like regardless of your gender, it's fucking your body, your choice. But just be a decent human being. Groom. Like it, like if you're sitting there, you like I'm a you, you're like as a, if you I've just I've never sucked I've never sucked a dick. So for the purposes of this analogy, I'm going to be talking about pussies <laughs> just because I have more experience in that. Right? You can change the gender for whichever one takes your fancy. Right? But. You can be like, hey, I'm a woman and we get hair down in those places and I'm not going to shave my legs and I'm not going to uh, shave my pits. And I'm like, cool. I'm not licking your legs or your armpits. Yeah. <laughs> I'm licking your pussy. <laughs> like, you know, and it, it have hair up there, absolutely. But just, you know, in the same way that I shave my balls. I don't shave my pubes, but, you know, I'll make sure there's... Because my balls are going in your mouth. Yep. I'm fucking hair in your mouth. That's weird. <laughs> Unless you like that, in which case, fair play to you, but let me know and I'll stop shaving them. But man, shaving your arsehole, man, it was, it was a game changer. Wow, it's so much easier, you know. It's the the sheer difference in toilet paper usage and time. Yeah, it's so much. It's better for the environment. It's. Do you want to know what the equivalent is that we found for shaving your arsehole for shoes? Shoehorn, man. Anyone mm. who's not using a shoehorn now, I implore you. If you're a fan of this channel, you will know exactly what I'm going to say. Really, man. Is that just a life hack that none of us know? Oh man, everybody should know. A few things that everybody should do: drive an automatic car. Turn the sensitive... Oh, disagree immediately. Daniel, come on. It was going so well. <laughs> you know, I'm, I just... What, I, what, I, so I'm, this leg yeah. and this arm, they can just... I, this entire left... In fact, oh, this I'm whole sorry. left... Are you, are you tired while driving? <laughs> yes, I am. And I just want to maximise, like a flamingo. I, I want this entire I, side of my just body Just in case while this. driving I have a stroke... <laughs> I want to make, 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 make sure that nothing on the left is... What if you have a stroke on your right side? Well, I guess I'm fucked. Fuck. I'm just fucked. <laughs> nah. Come on, a, why, why a, am I your car? Well, you know what? I know I'm wrong. There's an amazing comedian called uh, Nick Cody who's got... And he drives an automatic car and his argument is I have no rebuttal towards it. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's 2000 and fucking, it's 2019, right? Why don't you go churn your own fucking butter? Yeah. Like, it's just, there's easier option exists. Why? For me, it's overtaken. Like, I remember every, yeah. every time I, do, I just, you slam down the thing and, and the car goes fifth gear and you're like, second, second, <laughs> second. <laughs> like, if you're coming down the fucking A1, right? You know those, you know those roads where it's just like, you like, you go overtake these fucking lorries, man. Yeah, yeah, like, it's yeah. the fucking That's A1, it's a shout Newcastle road. to Scotland, yeah, big style. Yeah. yeah. And when you go over, like, if you're, if I'm in a manual car, I go, right, I need to be in third gear for this thing. So you come out third, whoo, straight round, right? You know, not my car and you go out the lane, it's like, do you want to be in second gear? No, go to se- second. He's like, oh, th- th- fifth, fifth. And you're like, go, just fat, fat, fast. I'm going to die. And the guy's like, oh, no, would you, would you? Oh. Yeah, I can't. Okay, so we've got, um, we, we'll agree to disagree on the automatic versus manual I car. I mean, I know you're right. It's the future and you'll I shouldn't get, be, you you'll know. Get, it's you'll hard. get shit. You'll, we'll convert you. It's the, equi- it's, it's the car equivalent of vinyl. <laughs> right, yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Right. It's, it's just, it's just better. Just, it's just there. It's, it's just, just better. And more controlling. You, like, oh, shut up and drive you, the automatic. You need I a know room. I'm, you need a room for your music. Uh, like, I've got to have, have an iPod. It's one of those things where I know I'm wrong, but I'm not changing my opinion. Fine. Um, so we've got shoehorn. We've got automatic car. Turn the sensitivity up on the trackpad on your MacBook. So turn it up to the highest it will be within a week. Ten percent more productive immediately. Really? Promise you. Yeah, game changer. Um, and the the final one, mate. It's you know. Johnny, one of the co-hosts, actually even he moved back up vertically, integrated himself into his bowel movements and went to develop a green smoothie on a morning, which means that he's just wipeless now, that his bowel movements are so consistent and so well formed that absolutely perfect every single time. And you're like, well, oh my God, <laughs> like a single sheet. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like... Just like, yeah, that's yeah. It. and not even double ply. You can yeah. see your finger through it, yeah. and still he, he does that gamble. Away he goes. Right. So I am going to move on to Mother Sloss and what she's given us. So she's Mama Bear. She's given us a number of options of things that I can ask you about, and I'm going to ask you all of them, and then you can you can choose. Okay. So, Robot Wars and the pregnant washing up story. Oh yeah. Um, or the cans of deodorant story. Oh, yeah. Or rapping Shakespeare. Or at the age of 13, he drew his first graphic novel based on his baby brother called My Life with Hitler. My Life with Satan. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would. I'll, I'll happily compare. My, I'll happily compare my three-year-old brother to uh, Satan, but he was definitely not Hitler-esque. <laughs> like, and no, and like his first steps weren't fucking goose steps. Like it wasn't. <laughs> like the fact that she thinks is, "Mom, pay attention, would you? Come on." It was definitely my life with Satan. Yeah. Um, I fucking hate my younger brother, man. <laughs> I hate him. So, I hate him so much. He was a little shit. So the age gap, because my uh, so. Uh, when I was eight years old, uh, my six-year-old sister died. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, that's what my show Dark is uh, sort of about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there was a huge age gap between... So my brother was born when I was 10 years old, and yep. he was born then. So these are, when I was going, when I was 13 years old, he was three. And fuck, he sucked. I hate him. I was so annoying. <laughs> and, I, and in the hindsight, I know he was... To everything he was doing, he was just trying to get my attention. And my parents said this to me all the time. They were like, he's just trying to annoy you it's because it's the only time you ever pay him attention. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care if you're yelling at him or being mean to him. You're his older brother and he loves you and he wants you to pay attention to him, even if it's yelling. Mm-hmm. So just be nice to him and he'll not annoy you. And I would like, la, 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 I'm 13, I know much fucking better. Um, but he was, a ge- he was an evil little fucking genius man. To this day, my mother doesn't believe this story and I fucking swear to God it's true. <laughs> Matthew used to carry around uh, a bucket full of dummies, right? He loved loved his dummies. Like, he called them me's, couldn't say dummy, whether, you know, he just couldn't say, he called them his me's, and he had his bucket full of me's, and he would just walk around like a, you know, and he, every minute he would change it to a Thomas Tank and Joe one, to a Peppa Pig, to fucking whatever. He loved this bucket full of me's. One day I'm sat down uh, watching TV, and he, he walks into the room, just his fucking big fat toddler, toddler belly, belly hanging out. I think he's two and a half at this point, and he sees me, and I'm like, here we fucking go. Like, <laughs> Uh, like he's gonna do something to annoy me, and I'm gonna push him over because I'm a horrible big brother. <laughs> and he comes up to me and he takes his he takes his dummy out of his mouth and he hands it to me. And I'm you know, and my mum and dad have always been like, Could you be nicer to your brother? And I was like, oh, Okay, hey, that's something nice. Mm-hmm. I'll positively reinforce this behaviour. So he gave me the dummy, I was like, Thank you very much, Matthew. That's very, very kind of you. And I go back to watching TV and he stands there for like two minutes. Just calculate, right? And I know you'll be like, a two-year-old can't calculate. You fucking calculate, man. <laughs> you saw all the cards just thinking, thinking. And then he gave me the full bucket of all the other dummies. And I was like, thank you, Matthew. This is very, very kind of you. And then he took in a huge inhale of breath and screamed the fucking house down. My <laughs> mum comes in to me holding his dummy and his buckets of dummies while he's fucking crying, right? And she's like, why did you do I'm like, I, he gave them to me. She's like, why is he crying then? And I'm like, you fucking little <laughs> shit. Um, and she still doesn't believe that. I swear to God that is true. He's a hot... I love him now. I mean, I loved him then. But yeah. Yeah, Labour of love. Yeah, yeah, that was my that was uh, yeah. So I started writing comics um, on it. I was I was terrible at drawing. I just I like doing anything to make my parents laugh when I was young. That was mm. weird. What's the pregnant washing machine or the the, the uh, pregnant washing up story? So when uh, my mother was pregnant with uh, I think it was Jack. It was either Jack or Matthew. This is my father's third or fourth child at this point, right? So my mum's eight months pregnant, and uh, she she doesn't fucking. Snap, my dad's, my dad's not maliciously lazy. He's just sometimes forgetful or just a bit like, he, he works all day and he comes home and he doesn't want to necessarily, you know, do something. But he's got no leg to stand up because my mum works all day and still does chores around the fucking house. So she's in the right. And she's also pregnant at this point in her life. So she sort of goes to my dad and she's like, can you just be a bit more useful? I know you're, you know, just be a bit, I'm fucking pregnant. There's some stuff I physically can no longer do anymore. Like I fu- like eight months pregnant is like you, yeah. you're like a globe. Yeah, exactly. Like, totally she, spherical. Yeah. yeah, and she's like, I can't do the dishes anymore. Like physically, like uh, I can't because the because there's a fu- your fucking baby <laughs> is in the I can't. <laughs> and she goes, could you just make my life a little bit easier? And uh, that night while she was sleeping, my dad welded a semicircle into the sink so that she could get. In, oh my god! Which is yeah. Wow. Mm. I mean, that a level is of pettiness I aspire to. Unbelievable! I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm actually yeah, really, yeah. really impressed. Yeah, no, she gave, she fucking beat the shit out of him. <laughs> she absolutely shamed him. <laughs> Man, Daniel, I, I've absolutely loved today. Thank you That's very much. Fun. Thank for you very much for having me on. Um, can you tell the listeners where they can find you online and what shows you going to be doing? Where you're going to be soon? Uh, so you can. Uh, I would f- across the board. I would just recommend going onto Netflix. Uh, I've got two. Uh, 
Netflix specials on there. They're called Dinosaur Live Shows. First one's called Dart. The second one's called Jigsaw. Uh, if you enjoy those specials, uh, I'm on tour literally everywhere in the world. Um, <laughs> go on to dinosaurs.com. And if you don't enjoy the specials, cool. Don't let me know. I don't need to know. <laughs> uh, I don't need to know. I have no interest in you if you find me crap. Just move on. Forget me. I'll forget you. Peace and love. Man, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, it's been man. awesome. Cheers. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh.